what you're doing. Jean Whitaker didn't attend West Point, nor has she had any military experience. Yet Jean is commander-in-chief of a field exercise that would have challenged one of Napoleon's generals. Jean is chief choreographer for Opryland USA's live entertainment department. And back in October, she was handed an assignment that sounded like the contents of a Mission Impossible folder. Prepare a musical show that would bring together all the types of music heard at Opryland. She was told that she had to choreograph over 300 people and fill an entire football field with action. Her deadline was January 1st, 1981, and the show was to run no more than 9 minutes 30 seconds. Ladies and gentlemen, the Orange Bowl Committee presents Halftime 1981. Saluting the 10th anniversary kickoff for Opryland, USA, America's most exciting institution of musical entertainment. We present I Hear America Singing. I hear America singing, I hear America singing, I hear America singing. I hear America singing. Opryland's long suit is its live talent. The park features 305 performers and 10 shows. These youngsters are the pick of the crop. Gene selected 28 from among all of Opryland's talent to be at the center of the Orange Bowl show. The first step was to pre-record the show using park voices and musicians. Once the track was recorded, the singers had to begin learning all new dance routines. That's better. Well, well, no, it's not. Yeah, but you kind of, okay. Wait a minute, what? Don't While Jean was in Miami trying to whip her troops of non-dancers into shape, the Opryland professionals had to wing it on their own. For several rehearsals, it was choreography by committee. Because we don't know. Because Jean had said, you know what, if we set what we want and it works, and we show it to Jean, and she says, oh, that looks fine, this looks work she has to do. An appearance by singer Jerry Reed will put the icing on the show, but the last 45 seconds should equal the burning of Rome and the Warren G. Harding inauguration for action and fireworks. Then when Jerry Reed's number is finished, uh, during the chimes that go into the final I Hear America singing, the stage, uh, the uh, field, and the entire stadium is blocked out, and timed with the music, there are rockets which come from the two points in the center of these starbursts uh, in time with the music on beat. Then that blacks out totally, and as we go into the final I Hear America singing, the uh, stage is filled, or the area is filled with fireworks. And as the number ends, those four top hats that I mentioned earlier, the lights in the stadium comes on, come on all of the people that have been in the show are around it the top tap of the top hats have opened and balloons come out Opryland's involvement in the Orange Bowl halftime show goes beyond providing 28 of its performers and choreographing 300 other dancers the bowl show also presented a major challenge to this woman Kate Kinnis is head of Opryland's large costuming department. Kate and her people were assigned the task of modifying hundreds of park costumes to fit the Miami recruits who will fill out the show. When, as the song says, the days dwindled down to a precious few, Jean and her staff continued to refine the show. One cast member left for a Broadway play and was replaced. Two additional dancers were brought in, and the choreography was fine-tuned and polished. Guest star Jerry Reed and Jean's cast of hundreds will all come together on the Orange Bowl field when the halftime whistle blows in Miami later today. NBC has promised to televise the Opryland extravaganza without interruption. Gene Whitaker will be on the sidelines. If the camera pans the crowd at the beginning of the second half, Gene will be the one with no fingernails. So my, my greatest fear would be that we, that we didn't entertain those people like we're wanting to do that day. 
everything we got. Hey, Christmas night, come on along.